project management. What exactly is it? In the next few minutes, I'll be taking you through project management. I've been a project manager for over 20 years, and I often get the question, Phil, what is project management? Which industry? How can you say project management and not make it specific to an industry? Well, project management is a wide array of things, but it can be summed up in three major components. Project management is the application of knowledge to project activities, the application of skills to project activities, and the application of tools and techniques to project activities. Now, in this presentation, I'll be showing you what knowledge, what skills, what tools and techniques are we talking about here? Now, before we get to that, I want to make you aware of a statement. 90% of global senior executives ranked project management methods as either critical or somewhat important to the ability to deliver successful projects and remain competitive. In other words, these executives realize that in order to stay competitive, they needed to have project management down to a T in their firms. And this is from the Economist Intelligence Unit survey. It is common knowledge that project management is very important. But let's first of all address the question, what is a project? A project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. Projects start, but they end. Unlike operational work, which starts and continues through the life of an organization, you see, project management is different. But let's talk about why projects are authorized in the first place. Projects are authorized to advance the strategic business objectives of an organization. If an organization wants to move forward from one stage or state to another, they need projects as a vehicle to move them forward. If an organization wants bigger revenues, they need projects to move them forward. They need temporary endeavors that will move them from state A to state B, whatever that might look like. So strategic considerations and reasons for authorizing a project could include market demand. Maybe there's a demand in the marketplace for a certain commodity. Well, there could be a project to satisfy that organizational need. Whatever the need in the organization, a project could be embarked upon to address that. A customer request. If a customer requests a certain deliverable, a certain product, service, or result, there could be a project to fulfill that. Technological advance advancements in technology, in hardware, in software. A lot of times, they are projects to refresh the entire infrastructure of an organization. Legal requirement. If the government creates a new set of rules, laws, or regulations, there may need to be projects to address that firm by firm. Or social need. Again, projects address that as well. So when we talk about what is project management, it's the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to produce a specific deliverable. Now, a project manager is different from a functional manager or an operations manager. Let's talk about how the functional manager provides oversight for a functional or business unit. The operations manager is responsible for ensuring that business operations are efficient and the day-to-day -day running of the business is smooth. The project manager, however, leads a team, and it could be a temporary team that is responsible for achieving the project's objectives. So the project management formula is what I want you to take away from this. The formula is knowledge plus skills plus tools and techniques equals project management. As simple as that. Now, we're going to expand on this, but I want you to take away the overarching framework so when people ask you, what is project management? Just remember the project management formula, and you can build on that formula in your own way to explain project management to them. Because project management, again, is applying knowledge, applying skills, applying tools and techniques to projects. That's what it is. So let's break this down even further. When we talk about knowledge, what kind of knowledge? General management. Now, under general management, if you know about Peter F. Drucker, we could go on and on talking about him and his theories and his ideas and what he postulated. But you should also remember 
general motivational theories and general management ideas and theories that have been around for a long time. Schedule management, managing a schedule. Risk management, managing uncertainty. Cost management, managing cost. Quality management, understanding how to make a deliverable fit for use, how to get it to conform to requirements and to satisfy the customer. Resource management, managing resources, human equipment, materials, supplies, facilities, communications management, knowing what to communicate, planning to communicate it, and understanding the why and the when of the communications. Integration management is a very unique knowledge area to project managers in that it is very specific to project management, but integration is the glue that binds all moving parts of the project together. And understanding that just makes one a better project manager. Being able to apply that knowledge just makes you a better project manager. Procurement management is really managing of contracts, vendor relationships, seller relationships, and things such as that. A lot of times the entire business units to manage this area in organizations. And last but not least, stakeholder management, which deals with managing how a stakeholder is engaged. Let's talk about the skills that a project manager should have. I often get the question, Phil, would I become a good project manager if I were to become a project manager? I say, have you got the skills? The skills such as interpersonal and team skills, being able to interact with people and interact with teams and lead teams. What about business acumen, understanding the way a business is made up. This could help a project manager greatly on projects. Having communication skills, negotiating skills, leadership skills, being proactive, having organization skills, time management skills, problem solving, and critical thinking. These are some of the skills that project managers will find very useful in their day-to-day -day project management. Now, some people say, I'm a natural born project manager. Perhaps they have these skills already. But for those people who do not have these skills, project management is a learned skill. You can learn the knowledge. You can learn the skills. And last but not least, you can learn the tools and techniques to manage projects. Expert judgment is a technique that we apply in project management. Understanding scheduling tools like Primavera, Microsoft Project, even Excel can be used to manage a schedule business tools of all sorts for reporting, cost tools, spreadsheets, data gathering techniques, data analysis techniques, data representation techniques, decision making and project reporting. All of these are examples of tools and techniques that can be used in project management. So when we talk about project management, you've got to remember the formula. Knowledge plus skills plus tools and techniques. You are applying these things to the project and the project activities to deliver the end result. Now, research showed in a survey that of those organizations that use a methodology, 41% use the Project Management Body of Knowledge Guide, the PMBOK Guide. 26% do not use a standard methodology. But the long and short of the story is that it pays to be calculated and deliberate in your project management to have a methodology. Taking a look on the screen here, you can see that organizations that use a methodology, 38% meet budget, whereas those that don't use a methodology, 31% meet budget. There's a 7% differential. That could be a lot of money when we're talking about billions of dollars. What about staying on schedule and meeting scope? Across the board, you see between a 7 to 10% differential when it comes to staying on schedule, meeting scope, meeting quality standards, and meeting expected benefits, quite a large differential. And as a result of this, project management has been found to be so important in companies. 41% use the PMBOK guide, the Project Management Body of Knowledge guide, as a standard for managing their projects. So the bottom line is that project management is very important. But project management did not start today. Project management has been around for a while. Early day project management in 2500 BC is exemplified in the pyramids of Giza. Now, when you take a look at this, or you take a look at around 206 BC, the Great Wall of China, what do you see? You see impeccable planning and design 
which is a pointer to the fact that project management didn't start today. It's been around for a while. Ancient history tells us that. The similar basic elements of project management, managing resources, maintaining a schedule, coordinating different groups, all are used in today's modern project management practice. Now, there's no evidence that they used optimal scheduling, but they definitely were doing things in a deliberate and calculated fashion. So what makes project management exceptional is often asked. I say great project management is not great because of software tools. Tools are good, but great project management is made great because of the great minds and the great attitudes of the people behind the tools. You see, project management is primarily a leadership job. It's all about leading people on projects, communicating with people on projects. The project manager spends about 90, 70 to 90% of the time communicating, 70 on the low end, 90 on the high end. It just shows you that project management is a very important skill in organizations, regardless of the methodology, the spin that they have on how they do it. It is an important skill to have. In the mid-19th century, business leaders were faced with the task of organizing labor in manufacturing and assembly. Business leaders had to get things done quicker, more efficiently. And thereby, we saw the rise of people like Henry L. Gantt and the basic Gantt chart. As we see the Gantt chart on the screen, it has evolved. It is now included in tools like MS Project and Primavera and Smart Sheets and so on. But it started off in the early 1900s with Henry L. Gantt. Same thing for the basic milestone chart. It's very similar to the Gantt chart, but it's a truncated version of the Gantt chart that shows you when a milestone is achieved. Also from Henry L. Gantt. So we see that project management began to evolve in the 1900s, and that has brought us to where we are today. There has been a long journey through project management, tools, techniques, and many different things. But if you want to learn more about this, I would encourage you to go to praiseion.com, ask any questions you have. But if you want to take a course, you can actually go to tinyurl.com forward slash PM 101 course. And on PM 101 course, you can learn a lot more about project management, what it is, certain tools and techniques. And I also walk you through how to break into project management, how to work as a project manager. So if you found this to be useful, share it with a friend, share it with a colleague. I wish you all the very best in your project management. If you're looking for professional certification in project management, again, don't hesitate to send any questions to support at praiseion.com. All the very best in your project management. Bye for now.